We don't respond to what happens. We respond to our perception of what happens. Number two, of all the possible interpretations, we choose the worst one. Now here's the learning. First time in your life that you felt hurt and angry that when you perceived somebody didn't care about you or didn't respect you? Or has it happened before? So whether you're going to hell or you're on the way to heaven, it all happens up here, which is such a powerful teaching because this is what we can work on. You can see yourself as the victim of the world and trying to change the world so that you, they won't hurt you anymore, or you can actually empower yourself. And that's what the healing is all about. And anybody listening, I just want to know, it doesn't matter what state of mind you're in, it doesn't matter what you're experiencing, it's human, it is transmutable, it is transformable, because that true self that you got disconnected from is still available to you. A quote, which I love, it's one of my, from one of my favorite teachers, and uh, his name is A.H. Almas. And he says, your conflicts, all the difficult things, the problematic situations in your life are not chance or haphazard. They're actually yours. They're specifically yours, designed specifically for you, by a part of you that loves you more than anything else. The part of you that loves you more than anything else has created roadblocks to lead you to yourself. You're not going to go in the right direction unless there's something pricking you in the side saying, telling you, look here, this way. That part of you loves you so much that it doesn't want you to lose the chance. It will go to extreme measures to wake you up. It will make you suffer greatly if you don't listen. What else can it do? That's its purpose. I found this to be true of physical illness and mental problems and everything. you got to see what is the teaching here. So we can look at all these things as problems to get rid of, which is what the personality wants to do, or we can look at them as learning opportunities, which is what your true self wants to do. Now, two things. One is you talked about intention in life. So my wife and I had a holiday recently in Costa Rica. Partly it was a working holiday, but partly it was just a holiday. Traditionally, we've had terrible times doing holidays, partly because my workaholism, and once I go into a holiday, I just collapse, and now, my wife is dragging a corpse around. So this time, we actually went into the holiday with intention. This is nothing to do with psychedelics. It's just to do with that we set an intention. What is our intention? And if we have an intention, I've learned from a couple of very wise teachers, what structures do we want to set up to support our intention? And how are we going to handle when there's kind of disagreement or conflict? We had a beautiful holiday because it was the first intentional holiday that we've had. So that intention in life in general is absolutely essential. Like every morning, what is my actual intention? This is something I do uh, in my groups or, or, or when I teach. I ask people to tell me some recent episode when they're upset with somebody with their lives. Something that they're open to sharing. So it doesn't have to be anything sorted or something, but just something, you know, whether it's your spouse, partner, the bus driver, a friend. Okay, so what I'm happened? Just, there were a number of issues in my home, broken uh, aspects of the home, things that were falling apart or needed to be fixed. Physically. Physically. Okay, yeah. Right. And I had hired someone to do these things right. while I was gone. Okay. And I came back and none of them were fixed. Okay. And your emotional reaction was? Anger. Rage. Anger. Okay. Anything else besides anger? Frustration. I was disappointed. Disappointed is sadness. Well, disappointed is not so much an emotion as a state of mind. I'm asking what the emotions were. I'm, I'm, What's inside disappointment? Something didn't happen. I wanted it to happen. How do I feel? Isn't there sadness there? Yeah, sadness. So there's anger and sadness. Those are the emotions. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a silly question. What were you sad and angry about? What, 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 what does that mean that they didn't fulfill their commitments? They didn't care about me. They uh -huh. didn't care. Uh, that they, they didn't, didn't res respect me. So they didn't care about you and didn't respect you. What kind of person doesn't get cared or respected? Someone who doesn't deserve to be cared for or respected. Exactly. Right. Somebody unworthy, right? If there are other people here, which there usually are when I do this exercise, I would ask them, okay, we just listened to uh, Tim tell us about this experience. Are there other reasons why this other person might not have done the work right. that has nothing to do with yep. him or her not caring about Tim or not respecting him? So what other reasons might there be? 
A million and one. I mean, name it, one. Yeah, the, it, he could have. He could be in the hospital. He could be in the hospital. His what part, else? Part what else? cared one could have been in a car accident. Exactly. Uh, he had a, a flight delay and got caught on Puerto Rico during a hurricane. I'm, yeah, it, he's got ADHD. Yeah. Uh, he and he can't follow through. Um, he's under stress and he couldn't. Okay, and any number of possibilities. Yeah. No. Of all the possibilities that you've just uh, outlined, including that he, they don't care about you or respect you, which is the worst one. So let's notice something. Mm. A, you, I should say we, because we're all like this, we don't respond to what happens. Mm -hmm. We respond to our perception of what happens. Okay? That's what the Buddha said. It's with our minds we create the world. So that if you'd found out he had ADHD or, or he was stressed or, you know, you might have been sad for him but he would not have been angry and you would not have been sad so first of all we don't respond to what happens we respond to our perception of what happens to our interpretation of what happens number one number two of all the possible interpretations we choose the worst one thirdly what i just said isn't true we didn't choose it it's not like you went through all these possibilities <laughs> and you right. said was it multiple choice yeah, i chose back you didn't the brain jumped there automatically right mm -hmm. my question is why yeah now here's the learning First time in your life that you felt hurt and angry that you, when you perceived somebody didn't care about you or didn't respect you? Or has it happened before? And most people I talk to, um, it goes back way back in, into childhood. And that's what trauma is. We don't respond to the present moment. We respond to the past. But along the lines of our discussion, it's a beautiful learning opportunity. Now you get to know now, what if you assumed for a moment that you're the most lovable, most worthy of care, most worthy of respect person in the history of the universe, and this guy doesn't do your home? What's your response? Any number of the other options, which does not trigger yeah. an intense negative emotional state. Yeah. So something in you, I would argue, still believes that you're not worthy of care and respect. And that's what gets triggered. So who's the one that doesn't care about you? And who's the one that doesn't think you're worthy of respect? No, it'd be me. It'd be you. No, that's a learning. No, it is. And this yeah. is exactly what you're talking about. You're this saying is, how these difficult yeah. things, how these uh, problems are always teaching opportunities. And that's the beauty of healing, is that when you reframe things and you, and you actually see the source within ourselves, all of a sudden, that's liberating. Because guess what? If you're feeling that way because this guy did this or didn't do that, that makes you a victim. But if you see that you're the source, now you're powerful. So whether you're going to hell or you're on the way to heaven, it all happens up here, which is such a powerful teaching because this is what we can work on. You know, if we're, if we're victims of the world, Ramana Maharshi, who's a great Indian uh, guru, um, he said something like, if your foot hurts when you walk outside, you can do two things. One is to wrap the whole world in burlap, or you can get a pair of shoes. You can see yourself as the victim of the world and trying to change the world so that you, they won't hurt you anymore, or you can actually empower yourself. And that's what the healing is all about. And anybody listening, I just want to know, it doesn't matter what state of mind you're in, it doesn't matter what you're experiencing, it's human, it, it is transmutable, it is transformable because that true self that you got disconnected from is still available to you so it's not a question of just talking about what happened in the past it's a question of how do we reconnect to ourselves and what you're describing about your own state if i can put it in one sentence you'd probably agree with me that you're probably much more connected to yourself than you used to be a hundred percent yeah hundred percent and that's the and that's, that's the, the prerequisite i mean that's that's why i feel the way i described exactly i hope people will listen to this into you in a very personal sense and that the discussion with you will help people look at themselves in maybe a new way. Um, so rather than self-judgment about stuff that went wrong or they did to themselves or others, they get curious, what made me do that? They get curious compassionately because we are all born innocent and we're all born um, just wanting to be loving and loved. And then something happens and then it's, it's a hard road back but I hope that this conversation helps people reconnect with that path or, or, con or, or encourage them to continue on it. And then secondly, not to see it as an individual issue. It's a social issue. 
We live in a society that really does disconnect people. And so it's not just an individual problem or, or an individual family problem. It's multi-generational. We never even talked about the multi-generational nature of trauma, but it is. Uh, we pass this on from one generation to the next, not because we intend to, but because we can't help it. So it needs to be looked at in deep over the generations and broadly as the function of a whole society. So that the Buddha said that without the many, there cannot be the one, without the one, there cannot be the many. And he talked about the interconnected core rising of phenomena. So we are social creatures, our brains are wired together. So whatever you're dealing with, you have to look at not just the individual internal environment, but also the broader social and cultural environment of which you're one particular manifestation.